is it really Wednesday again I, I, I really can't believe it the weeks are flying by Do, 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 do. the first thing I want to say tonight right now at this very moment in time at four minutes past ten o'clock <laughs> it is very very hot right here in the studio it is absolutely sweltering it is so hot in the studio I'm wearing my shorts in fact for a moment I thought about doing tonight's live stream completely naked hi everybody this is mr duncan in england how are you today are you okay i hope so are you happy well are you happy and are you cool at the moment i really really hope so it is absolutely boiling hot here in the studio so I've opened one of the windows even though I have lots of ventilation lots of air flowing through the studio it is still very hot in here because of all the lights so the studio is baking it is like being in a sauna sauna have you ever been in a sauna they can be quite hot places to be a little bit like my studio in fact oh but I, I shouldn't complain really because look look at this here is the view from my studio window tonight look at that so there it is there is the view from my studio just before the Sun started to set and tonight the Sun set at 9 35 so just around half an hour ago so 30 minutes ago the Sun set and would you like to see the view now so here it is this is now a live view right now so there it is so that you are looking at now is a live view from my studio window looking across into the distance and if you look in the distance you can see the town of Shrewsbury or Shrewsbury so some people say Shrewsbury and some people say Shrewsbury <laughs> so there it is that is the view now that particular town is around about 15 maybe 16 miles away so you are looking across into the distance from my studio window and that is a live view at this very moment in time so I hope you are enjoying that can I just say mr. Steve is not in a good mood tonight he is in a very bad mood so please be careful how you speak to mr. Steve tonight he's feeling very tetchy <laughs> I love that word tetchy if someone is tetchy it means they are easily irritated they are feeling on edge a little bit like me really because I don't know about you but when I get hot I always feel very tetchy so maybe I am feeling a little tetchy tonight but I know mr. Steve is and I will explain why a little bit later on now a lot of people have asked about the bulls the cows and the bulls in the field so let's have a quick look so this is some video footage from yesterday and of course yesterday I was in the garden doing a live stream did you see my live stream yesterday I was live on YouTube yesterday afternoon from two o'clock and of course I am back with you tonight as well so for those wondering when I am on you can catch my live English lessons on Sunday 2 p.m. UK time and also on Wednesday 10 p.m. UK time 
so those are the times of my live streams so they are the times when I'm normally on of course now and again I like to do some surprise live streams as well so now and again I like to give you a little surprise <laughs> for those who like surprises I, I do sometimes do surprise live streams like yesterday for example so yesterday I did a live stream and no one was expecting it no one at all <laughs> I hope you are well tonight I hope you are cool where you are I'm not very cool at the moment because it is absolutely boiling hot here in the studio and apparently tomorrow it's going to be even hotter tomorrow so today it was about 29 yesterday it was about 28 tomorrow wait for it wait until I tell you how hot it's going to be here tomorrow 31 degrees here tomorrow apparently can you believe it so <laughs> we'll have to wait and see but it looks as if this warm weather across England and the UK and many parts of Europe will continue until the weekend so maybe at the weekend we will be outside maybe this weekend we will be outside with the live stream so the live chat is up and running there it is don't forget mr. Steve will be here at around about 10 30 so let's have a look at the live chat hi everybody says Belarus here hello from France also Belarus is here as well hello to you hello everybody from Gosia Shirin Zoran Connell Patricia Miller hello Miller I'm not sure if I know you is this your first time here is it your first time on the live chat let me know Saika is here hello Saika Francisco hello Mr Duncan and all the other classmates Francisco is watching in Spain Belarusio Victor hello Victor I used to have an uncle my uncle his name was Victor you don't get many Victors nowadays it is a name that not many people have and that is something we will be talking about on Sunday so next Sunday we will be talking about names we will be talking about common names in English and we will be talking about uncommon names and maybe you can give us some of the names that are popular in your country all of that is coming on Sunday meanwhile tonight I am here live until around about 11 30 yes apparently I was thinking about it yes <laughs> naked mr. Duncan I don't think YouTube is way is ready I don't think YouTube is ready for naked mr. Duncan not yet anyway Victor says your sunset is beautiful yes we have a lovely view tonight the sunset was nice and we also have a live view outside as well Nicole says I am boiling too it's unbearable but it's really good to see you and mr. Steve again oh are you feeling fragile or fragile tonight yes I am <laughs> because it's so hot <laughs> it's so hot here in the studio so there is a live view and this is the live view looking out towards Shrewsbury and you can see now many of the lights have come on in the distance you can see the big clock tower and that particular clock tower is on the university and there are two church spires as well so that is a live view looking out 
to the nearby town of Shrewsbury or Shrewsbury the big question is why is mr. Steve unhappy tonight why is he feeling tetchy it's a great word isn't it I know here it's cold and very wet says Aurora is it really oh I'm sorry to hear that you're not very well I hope you're cold I hope your fever will clear very soon it's worth mentioning by the way that we now have live subtitles now this is something I want to explain very briefly last week YouTube has started doing live stream subtitles so some of you will see this underneath the video you, you will see this you can click on that and you will get live subtitles on the live stream yes live later on when the the live stream has finished those live subtitles will be regenerated as new subtitles so later on the subtitles will be replaced so they will be replaced so yes we have live subtitles isn't it amazing it's incredible so I hope you are enjoying that for those who can receive live subtitles it's incredible I love technology very much although having said that some people are very suspicious of of technology they don't trust technology and I'm going to tell you the name of one person who does not trust technology can you guess who it is <laughs> I'll give you a clue he will be appearing at 10 30 on this live stream mm. yeah it's true it's mr. Steve he doesn't trust technology he doesn't so yes the subtitles on the live stream are being tested and I am very lucky because I have been chosen to help test the live stream subtitles so yes isn't that nice YouTube has chosen me me can you believe it to test the live subtitles so it's amazing so at the moment they are just being tested so you might find that some of the subtitles are not correct for which I apologize right now Fanny Kobop Kobop says it's a beautiful landscape yes it is yes it's beautiful tonight we are really enjoying a lovely view out of the window tonight it's fantastic we had a beautiful sunset and everything is looking rather nice so what about you do you trust technology mr. Steve will be here in 12 minutes to tell us why he doesn't trust technology he is a little skeptical he is very wary wary oh I like that the word wary if you are wary of something it means you are suspicious or cautious about something so you are very wary I like that word if you are a wary person it means you are quite suspicious of things around you you are very wary shall we have a look in the garden because a lot of people have asked about the dahlia so let's have a look at the dahlia it is looking amazing at the moment there are so many flowers now coming out on the dahlia and the good thing about this plant is once the flowers have faded away you can cut them off and then lots of new flowers will replace them so you don't have to wait until next year to get more flowers you get them within two or three weeks so as soon as these flowers have faded away new ones will come along to take their place 
and that is one of the most amazing things about dahlias dahlias would you like to have a look in the garden a lot of people enjoy looking around the garden so let's go for a little stroll around the garden shall we I do 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 so tonight it was lovely outside you can see everything is looking very green and very lush lush and I must admit I do like summer even though during this period I, I often get hay fever but I'm very glad to tell you I'm happy to say that today my hay fever hasn't been too bad it's not been too bad I was sneezing tonight but fortunately my sneezing has now stopped so I'm feeling much better thank you very much so there you can see many of the plants many of the bushes and also some beautiful yellow flowers which a lot of people saw yesterday during my live stream they said mr. Duncan we like those yellow flowers in your garden we will see a little bit more of those later on so the light was beautiful tonight and there you can see it shining through the damson tree and there they are again the yellow flowers that I mentioned earlier now I would love to know what these flowers are called because earlier today I was trying to identify them and I, I couldn't find any information on these flowers so I'm trying to find out what these are actually called I did use a little application on my mobile phone but unfortunately it, it couldn't identify them so I would love to know what those yellow flowers are just in case anyone knows and if you do know please let me know ah <sighs> yes I, I, I must admit I have spent a lot of time in the garden today I've been outside for most of the day can you see some baby damsons so in around about two months from now I will be picking these damsons off the tree at the moment they are very small and they are not ready to be picked and there some some lovely water some refreshing water for the birds and today of course I did some washing I washed some clothes and if you look very carefully you can see the shirt the t-shirt that I wore yesterday <laughs> and there just to prove how beautiful the weather is can you see the blue sky there isn't a cloud in the sky oh and for those who are wondering what color my socks are tonight there you can see I am wearing my odd socks again I am wearing my odd socks and there I am walking around the garden so I hope you enjoyed that a little stroll around the garden on a Tuesday night and this is late and live English yes it is it's late and live just for you and it's mr. Duncan that's me for those who don't know who I am I've been teaching English on YouTube for over 11 years and now I am in to my 12th year I've been doing this for 12 years almost 12 years talking of which this weekend of course June comes to an end and July says hello and of course in July I will be celebrating my second anniversary of doing live streams so on the 15th of July it will be my second anniversary two years since I started doing my live streams so yes I've been a very busy bee over the past 11 and a half years it's true very busy indeed the live chat is also very busy let's see what's going on Ooh. weary yes I think weary or weary yes if you are weary 
it means you are tired but if you are wary it means you are suspicious or cautious so i hope that helps you i hope that helps you <laughs> we like your odd socks thank you anna maria thank you very much for that the leaf and the sky are a good combination yes i think so they are a very good combination caradas says the word lush means luxuriant, rich, abundant, profuse, exuberant, riotous, prolific, vigorous, dense, thick, rampant, <laughs> jungly. Yes, <laughs> I think that is a very good description of my garden at the moment. It is a little bit like a, a jungle. You are right. Well done. <laughs> why do you put your why do you put on your T-shirt the fragile teacher? Well, I'm feeling very fragile, very delicate tonight because it's so hot. It is a very hot day and also a very hot evening as well how do i get the live subtitles well first of all can i say that not everyone can see the subtitles at the moment not everyone can get them so that is just a warning just to let you know that not everyone can see the live subtitles however later on after the live stream has finished you can get subtitles on the recorded live stream <laughs> i know it's very confusing it's very confusing for me as well and i get very easily confused mr duncan don't be sad i have hay fever as well oh yes pitage pitage says i also get hay fever isn't that strange because i i find it very hard to find people who have hay fever I don't know many people I feel sometimes as if I'm the only person in the world who suffers from hay fever sometimes I feel as if I'm the only person in the world who gets hay fever and that's the reason why tonight I'm feeling very fragile do you like that <laughs> so please handle me with care be very gentle tonight because i am feeling very fragile and so is mr steve mr steve is not in a good mood and i will tell you why in a few moments after mr steve joins us on the live chat he will be here in around about three minutes oh no <laughs> what's happened what's happened what's happened to mr steve we'll find out a little bit later mr duncan where are the live subtitles you can find the live subtitles by clicking underneath the video or if you are watching on a mobile device an android device you can also find them on there so there are subtitles on the android devices and also on pcs and of course later on you can watch the subtitles on the recorded live stream and it doesn't matter where you are watching or what you are watching that particular thing on so later when the subtitles are regenerated and put back on you can all see the subtitles Whew. it's very very complicated sometimes technology can be very complicated oh thank you franco for your guess thank you very much uh so franco thinks it is a lysimicia or lysimica 
so yes maybe I'm going to try and find out what that yellow flower is called because I'm not sure I am actually not sure so no I'm not sure what the yellow flowers are <laughs> did you enjoy my legs earlier Lydia thank you very much for that <laughs> I think maybe Mr. Steve is going through the change yes maybe maybe it's Mr. Steve's age maybe he's going through the male menopause I think so and this is something that does happen to men yes it's true some people don't believe it but there is such a thing as male menopause and that's when men start to reevaluate their lives and maybe the hormones in their bodies start to change and then they have to adjust to getting older and some men find getting older very hard to deal with they do very strange things some men like to relive their youth maybe they will go out and buy a motorbike so this normally happens around about the age of 50 60 so between the ages of 50 and 60 some men start to do very strange things they have something called a midlife crisis midlife crisis and they start to do very strange things what about me am i having a midlife crisis every day for me every single day is a midlife crisis for me trust me so where is mr steve a lot of people are wondering where he is well i think he will be here very soon but let's have a quick look at the live chat so mr steve will be appearing on camera in a few moments so stand by stand by that's nice lots of people on the live chat it is a warm evening you are right yes what is your favorite flower asks Anna Maria I must admit I, I like all sorts of flowers but there is one particular flower that I love and it, it always appears at the start of spring and that is of course the daffodil I really do like daffodils very much guess who is about to appear on your screens go on see if you can guess <laughs> I do to do 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 oh thank you very much for that oh we're on thanks for the warning mr duncan well i i think i know i did actually give you a warning i was coughing and itching my nose the warning was here's mr steve well here i am stressed i'm stressed tonight mr duncan stressed i know I know Mr. Steve is not in a very good mood and all will be explained now. Now, during the past <laughs> three days, we've had some problems here, haven't we? We've had some very strange things going on with one particular thing. Mr. Steve will explain one essential service. You think, you know, it, 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 today we're 2018. The one thing that you shouldn't be cut off is water. Well, it depends where you are. Electricity, water, uh, sewage. And uh, we're here in the UK today. And because we've had a few days of hot weather, the water's run out. And, <laughs> and at least it has where where we are. Well, we'd, we're not sort of Midlands area. Well, first of all, there's a little bit more to the story mm. because they haven't told us what the problem is. So two days ago, we suddenly found we had no water. Suddenly, at about 10, 10 30 at night, the water went off. No water. We turned the tap and there was no water and no explanation. We didn't know why. No. Many of the neighbours were very concerned. They didn't know why either. No. There was no real explanation 
from the local、mm. water authority, but they said they were replacing something. They were replacing a piece of equipment. Yes. So yesterday the water came back on, but not until nine o'clock in the morning. This was on Tuesday morning. Yes, and so I had to go to work. Couldn't have a shower, you know. Well, I sort of had a makeshift one with a bottle of water. Yes, you you, you drinking just, water. Steve poured some water over his head, and it, other parts. But it worked anyway. It worked. <laughs> I didn't get any complaints, so we thought that's all fixed. So, but then last night it went off at eight o'clock. So last night the water went off again. So for the second day we lost、yes. the water. The the water went off yesterday. Hottest day of the year so far. The water went off yesterday on the hottest day. Yes. And then this morning it was back on again. It's back on. Oh, great! Yeah, everything's back to normal. Everything's back to normal. And then tonight, just before you went on live, just before, literally ten minutes before I started my live stream, the water went off again. The water went off again, and at this very moment there is no water, and it won't be back on to the morning, I suspect. So、uh, this is what it's like in the UK now. Since we decided we were going to leave Europe, suddenly there's no investment in infrastructure, no investment in public services, and the water's been cut off. Yeah, I so don't. So don't come to live here if you're thinking of, of of emigrating and coming to the UK. Just beware, you might not be able to get any water when you get here. Bring it with you. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, but it is bizarre. In 2018, well, actually, for the last hundred years, it would have been bizarre to have the water cut off because we should have got water sorted, you know, back in the 18th century. Well, we did, but for some reason, it's all been cut off. <laughs> this, this so is, I'm stressed, Mr. Duncan. When Steve talks, sometimes it's like a badly edited history lesson. <laughs> where, where were you then? You were a hundred years ago. Then you weren't a hundred years ago. Then you said a hundred years ago everything was all right. The point I'm making, Mr. Duncan, then you is said that a, in the UK, in England, we sorted out water supplies、uh, a long time ago,、uh, and for some reason now、uh, there's a problem. I don't think it was that long ago. In the Telford area. <laughs> It wasn't that long ago, though, was well, when it? When I grew up, we never had water shortages. Yes, well, apart I... from 1976, when there was an exceptionally dry period of rain, a dry period of、uh, of weather, and、uh, the the water supply, we had to have it rationed. Yeah, and there was that.、Uh, there, there was that weeks... other period as well. That brief period called the Second World War. Mr. Duncan, you're being facetious. Yes, that, that, I that, don't think they had water problems. I don't remember my mother saying they had water problems during the Second World War. Yeah. Well, although having said that, I think water shortages was probably the least of people's problems during the Second World War. Staying alive and not being bombed was probably. What's the war got to do with it, Mr. Dunn? Top of anyway, the list. Anyway, well, that's the situation we're in. We've got no water. What's the war、uh, got to do? So、uh, we're smelling a bit here because、What? we haven't had showers. I have. I had a lovely wash before the water went off. Well, that's all right for you, Mr. Duncan.、So、I've got to go to work tomorrow. Anyway, let's look at the live chat. See if anyone's interested in our water supply issues. Well, I would imagine that tomorrow the water will be back on. So, so we're we're still not、mm. sure. The point I'm trying to make eventually is that we don't know why this is happening. So, on the first day, of course, we thought, yes, there's a problem. Okay, they fixed it. The second day. It seemed a little suspicious, and now、yes. the third day, we've lost the water again. So now we are starting to think maybe、mm. there is more to the story. You know what I think, Mr. Duncan? They've built over the last five years. They've built an awful lot of houses in the area. Over a thousand houses.、Mm. Many houses have, have been, been built. built in the area, and I think that、uh, the infrastructure. Hasn't kept up with the、uh, with the number of houses, so I think that what's happening is the water's running out because there are too many houses and they haven't improved the the reservoirs or or something along those lines. That's what my suspicion is,、uh, because the water pressure has been dropping for the last few weeks. It's not like we haven't had any rain. We've had loads of rain. There's been lots of rainy weather all through the. Uh, winter and the spring, so there should be no problem with water supplies. And it's only here; the rest of the country doesn't seem to be having a problem. So it's Seven Trent Water. Shame on you, Seven Trent Water. Not that you're watching, but、uh, 
We haven't even. This is if when this is gone, we've got no water left, Mr. Duncan. So, we'll so have we, to find a stream. Fortunately, we have some bottled water. So you bought some today, didn't you? So that was a that was very lucky. So we have some bottled water. So we're not really going to to, to fall thirsty. No. We're not going to fall thirsty. We're not going to suddenly wither away like a like a dry plant. So there's there's no worry there. Yeah, yes, the, Jeff says that I bet the Queen has water. Yes, well of course they never have problems yeah. like this in London. That's it. The live chat uh, isn't on at the moment, isn't it? No. Well, Jeff says I bet the Queen has water. Yeah, now it's on. Well, I was reading it on there, wasn't I, Mr. Yes. Duncan? You've been very awkward tonight. I'm not being awkward. I'm just anyway. being. I'm just being professional. So now the live chat is on the screen. That wasn't very professional, allowing a big, big space there with everybody saying. I was taking in some oxygen. Martin's on. <laughs> That's not stress. I'm stressed, Martin. We've got no water. Oh, God. <laughs> Are you OK? Steve's trying to demolish the studio here. Just 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 try to calm down. And now I know you've had I'm a fine. You've I'm had a fine. I'm only joking, really. You've had a hard day and now you've found that there's no water and it's like the end of the world. The thing is, we always take these things. <laughs> we always take these things for granted. So we, we, we are used to just turning the tap so you can go to the tap you can turn the tap and then the water will come out and it's magic it's as if there is a little water fairy producing all of that water by magic but of course there is a big process that takes place to get the water into that tap so we, we still don't know what's happened there we are very suspicious we think maybe there might be unofficially oh, oh, oh. What? Jeff uh, says uh, I'm all yeah, set yeah. with drinking water. That's good. Except well, we're not all except, set with drinking except water. Except it's not on the screen at the moment. I'm just reading it from there. Yes, but it's out of context. <laughs> there we go. There it is now. Yeah, now, but they can see it, even, <laughs> aren't they? I don't know. There we go. So yes, well, the thing is, Jeff, we're not set with drinking water. Uh, but I know what you mean, and you're getting in use of the word set. Yes, so which is what very does it, clever. So in that sense, what does it mean? He's all set with drinking water. It means we've got a supply. We're fine. Everything's all right. We've got a supply of drinking water. That would mean we're set. Yes, but what does that mean in that context, the word set? Well, Jeff is saying that... that, that we're all set with drinking water. It means that's we've it. got drinking water. That's it. So it's it's all what? Well, you say it then. Prepared. I'm prepared. I'm set. So if something is set, if you're if you you have enough of it or you are prepared for it, <laughs> there is enough of it. <laughs> Mr. Junk has been very annoying tonight. Don't I'm you not, think? I'm not being annoying. <laughs> Drink vodka. Yes. If I can't drink water, I'll drink vodka. Can I wash with vodka? Uh, do you think? Uh, somebody said I ought to drink with uh, vodka. There we go. Somebody whose name I can't read uh, says I should drink vodka. Maybe, maybe I should. Maybe you should bathe in vodka, Steve. Belarusia, yes, Brazil won today, but who didn't? Have you talked about football already, Mr. Duncan? We haven't. No, we haven't mentioned it yet because we've been talking about other things. Um, yes, a big shock tonight. <gasps> yes. A big shock in the World Cup. Germany, they they have won the World Cup so many times. It's, it's unbelievable. It's, unbe it's absolutely unbelievable. Tonight, they were knocked out by <gasps> South Korea. Well done, South Korea. And uh, well, that's good because that means that we're in with a chance now. Yeah, we are. All we need uh, now is for Russia to get knocked out, Italy to get knocked out, Brazil to get knocked out. And then we'll be playing, I don't know, um, Inner Mongolia. <laughs> I think it's going to be, my prediction is it's going to be an England-Brazil final. <laughs> what about that? And how am I going to, which way am I going to go there? Because I said, of course, I've said live that I, if England were thrown out, I would support Brazil. But then when it comes to a final between Brazil and England, well, that's going to be... What did Pele 
used to play for Brazil. Famous, <laughs> yes, you uh, asked footballer. this. You asked this last week. Did we get an answer? I don't think no. We did. Pele. Pele. Who did he used to play for? Sure, it was Brazil. Anyway, you're, you're, you're certainly asking the wrong person if you're asking me because I have no idea. I'm asking the world now, perhaps so they can supply. I've calmed down, now, Mr. Duncan. I'm so calm. Alex says, "Who, not who will win? Who will win? Who will win the World Cup?" Martin wants England to win. So do I. I don't really care to be honest. I'm not a fan of football, so I don't follow it. But what? I, I was rooting for Iran. I really thought Iran was going to uh, win the World Cup this year. The foot there. <laughs> Look, trust I'm me. Gonna, I nearly said something uh, that could have got me uh, into trouble. Then you know, you know, you know, you know, you know what I think, uh, and I'm making a prediction right now. A prediction, a prediction. Even if I can say it, I hope I can. That's because you're dehydrated with a lack of water. I can make a prediction now that 2050, 2050. The World Cup will be hosted by Iran. There. You know where you heard it first. So 2050, 2050, the World Cup will be hosted by Iran. I think so, yes. I'm if that sure. happens, it'll be because they've, they, they've put us to ransom that if they don't get the World Cup, they'll uh, threaten us with nuclear weapons. That's nice. Uh, so that's <laughs> Thank that's you. the only way Iran are ever going to hold the World Cup. <laughs> OK, we've got a live view. You know what I'm talking about. Oh. Yeah. Yes, we've got it. We've got a live view outside. There it is. Look at that. Looking over into the distance. We had a beautiful sunset tonight. And there it is. That is an actual live view looking out towards Shrewsbury, which is about 15, maybe 16 miles away from here. And there, look at that. It looks like Africa. Isn't it? What? With the red sunset. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's no answer to that, really. There is no answer to what Mr. Steve just said. And of course, earlier, did you see the sunset earlier? It was lovely. So there it is earlier. So that's what it looked like earlier tonight. Isn't that gorgeous? It's a bit misty. Isn't that gorgeous? Well, that's the haze as the sun starts to set. So what you're looking at there is the haze. You're looking at a parched landscape. Yes. And devoid of water. And here is the view, the same view right now. There it is. Look at that. Through the wonders of modern technology. Talking of which, we were discussing something very interesting today, weren't we, Steve? We were talking about technology because you had to do something today on your computer, didn't you? Yes. And you know how I love technology, Mr. Duncan, and how, how it loves me. It just loves me and I love it. You don't like technology and technology doesn't like you. I think it would be fair to say. I had to, I was at, obviously at work, but I had to come home at 3.30 because I had to take part in a training session and I had to use, it was called a webinar. Yes, or uh, it, it's similar to a conference call, isn't it? That's right. But, so, but you can see the person as well. You can see the person that is delivering the uh, the, the, the uh, presentation or the lesson, which it, this was. And uh, and then uh, there's lots of people taking part from all around the country. And uh, we all dial in and then she can put a screen up so we can see what, what she wants to tell us on a screen. She can put slides up, put a presentation up. We can hear her and of course as usual because I have to attend several of these at least one a week the usual technical issues uh, one it took me about half an hour to get on anyway uh, and uh, and then when we eventually did all get on the the presenter uh, sounded like she was talking uh, down a long tube well there was you said there was an echo there was, she was had a, a, an echo and she couldn't get rid of it so echo 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 for the echo. whole hour and a half she had an echoey voice echo uh, echo echo it didn't echo. really work they don't work very well these are webinars so anything uh, anything where you have to communicate with more than one person through the internet it's always a disaster trust me and and google knows all about that because of the, the a thing that they used to have where lots of people could talk at the same time in a, in a group mm. And it never works properly. It's one of the worst types of technology. 
but of course tonight you have super duper high definition and even live subtitles see, as well this works much better than anything we've got at work i've just that's the last of the water by the way yes and for those wondering you can see the captions or subtitles by clicking on this sign if you have it not everyone has it at the moment and i am one of the first people on youtube to have live subtitles isn't that amazing oh so they are just testing the feature at the moment so if you are lucky you will have live subtitles and of course later on after the lesson has finished after youtube has recorded this there will be subtitles once again on the live chat for everyone to read so i know it's very complicated but you are slightly suspicious and the reason why you are suspicious is you actually thought or you think that people can listen listen wow. listen in so even if you're sitting by your computer and you're not connected to anything but you are on the internet steve steve thinks maybe people can actually access or listen because of course the computer has a microphone and a camera built in mm. So, so you sometimes think you get a little worried, don't you? Even to the point where he actually covers the camera. I do. You cover the camera on the laptop. So Steve's laptop, he mm. actually puts a little piece of paper over the camera because sometimes he thinks that people might be just spying and seeing what he's doing. I might be, you know, looking at some of my bank details or something like that. Or Mr. Duncan might wander in. Yes, he might be uh, naked. He might be naked. That wouldn't happen. Um, so what I'd like to know is, have we got any computer experts out there watching tonight who know a lot about technology, computers? Can people monitor you through your laptop uh, or your, your phone? Can they, can they connect to you in some way and listen in? Uh -huh. uh, because I was sitting there today uh, and suddenly a message popped up to say, hello, Stephen, are you having problems with your computer? I noticed that you can't connect to something. Mm. And it was somebody from our IT office must have, I don't know, must have been monitoring me in some way and discovered that uh, I was having problem connecting to somewhere. So instead of waiting for me to phone up IT support, and uh, asked them to sort it out they sent me a message that popped up on the screen yes so it's as if That's someone suspicious it's as if someone knew what steve was doing or maybe and this is what i said i said it's probably an automatic feature so maybe there's an automatic feature or something but there are people who have their own thoughts and opinions and there is of course a lot of distrust at the moment isn't there steve because of the recent Ah. the recent use of people's data by companies such as Facebook and I, I must admit I, I'm really enjoying Facebook with their their feeble attempt their terrible terrible attempt to to rebrand themselves as being lovely and fair and beautiful and ever so nice but I'm, I don't I don't think many people or maybe some people don't trust sites like Facebook anymore. Uh, Connell says, uh, go just go back to it. Connell says it, that there we are. That you're going too fast, Mr. Duncan. Uh, Connell says, do you pronounce it Iran or Iran? I think if you're in English, you would pronounce it Iran. Americans tend to say Iran. Yes. Yeah, so the the stress is very different on the first letter. So Iran. So we tend to say Iran. If you are American or if you have an American accent, which is actually what we're talking about, it's Iran. Iran. Um, like Iraqis. So Iraq as well. You might hear people say Iraq. Instead of and we we would say Iraq, Iraq, Iraq. So yes, there are some slight differences, but once again, that's more because of the accent or the type of pronunciation. So it isn't necessarily because 
of the different English being spoken it's just really down once again to accent yes it both are correct so both the answer both are correct uh, how how will you go to the toilet um, <laughs> uh, yes well it's gonna get a bit smelly yes because we can't we'll have to put lots of bleach down oh I see I've just realized what Jeff has said Jeff said we can use the toilet water so we can take <laughs> we can take the water out of the toilet and drink that thankfully we do have some bottled water yes we have plenty of bottled water somebody, thank somebody just said they're watching from Brazil um, oh yes Mark Zuckerberg co covers his mic and camera oh really says MX 25 a and somebody yeah. else said that uh, yes I'm not sure if that's a real thing that that sounds to me like something that someone has made up on the internet well, strangely enough I met with my boss a few weeks ago mm -hmm. and he said to me so he 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 knew that I covered the camera on my laptop and I don't know how he would know because we never use laptops in work meetings. We always use iPads. So I am suspicious that we are being watched but uh, at all times. Yes, I have a theory about that one. Maybe in the past you've joined in one of these conference calls and the camera wasn't showing even though the, your camera was connected. But maybe it was just black. So mm -hmm. that so you would conclude you would come to the conclusion that you must have been covering the camera because that's what you kind of would would assume. So if 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 I connected to you on your computer and the screen was black, I would just assume that you had covered the camera. So maybe that's the reason why it could be. Yeah. Nicole says that and I agree uh, that the sunset looks like uh, I think she means Mars planet Mars yes it does look a bit a bit Martian would I like to go on the mission to Mars uh, I can tell you now Nicole there will be no mission to Mars no uh, it's not happening it's all hype <laughs> uh, it's too difficult it will be a suicide mission we can't even get we to can't the even get back to the moon we can't even go to the moon I mean uh, that's just next door that that's like walking down your garden path to the gate we can't even get that far so I don't know how we're going to get to Mars it won't happen uh, until we can find uh, a better propulsion system uh, you can't have you can't have astronauts in three months just to get there it's just an utter and complete waste of money uh, we should be sending robots not human beings <laughs> because they're much cheaper to send robots than human beings and we could spend the money much better uh, on uh, on helping people survive on this planet than wasting it on sending men to Mars utterly pointless and they won't be able to do anything when they get there mm, this is what a lot of people <laughs> say I mean we, we can't even sort out this planet what why are we mm. going to other planets we, what we should do first is sort this planet out we should make sure that Earth is well taken care of we should make sure that we can all get along together as one race and let's one face it group of people on the planet and then maybe we can all put our heads together and then we can decide how we are going to explore other planets but first we should get this this sorted out first planet earth yes we can't we can't keep sending people up into space on what is effectively a giant firework uh, yeah <laughs> you know that that's all we've got at the moment the the, the 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 technology we've got is just to sit people on top of what is in, in effect a giant firework yes I mean you can't go uh, how far is it to Mars it, it takes something like three months to get there it's it's, it's about a billion miles or something I mean you can't send people up in a giant firework yes well it's three months if you're going at a very 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 fast speed that's right exactly so you've got to be really still be going very fast and of course you can just about get the rocket up above the earth but then you have to then travel all the distance to Mars and it's a very very long way it's not like getting on the bus and then 20 minutes later you arrive and then a nice man says we are now approaching Mars all those departing for Mars please leave the bus now it's nothing like that 
it's a little bit more complicated elon musk thinks that within the next five years we'll be going to mars i don't think we rubbish will be. i think elon musk is just a very bored millionaire or should i say billionaire he's trying to make a name for himself he's just, it, it's all he's it's just all hype this is what happens sometimes when, when you become very wealthy and rich you become very bored and you, you want to have new hobbies so elon musk i think his hobby is making electric cars and also making big rockets so it's like a hobby really for him that's what billionaires do He's going to struggle anyway, because I think uh, because uh, electric cars, everyone's starting to. I mean, the company that he's got that makes uh, electric cars, Tesla, um, aren't, uh, you know, they, they, they've he's now got to compete with all the big brands like BMW, Ford, Mercedes, who are all starting to make electric cars, who have got massive resources and uh, he's going to have to start to compete with them and whether he will survive long term uh, producing electric cars uh, will remain to be seen so i think he'll run out of money uh, before he gets anyone to mars i mean it probably is possible to get a man to mars uh, but let's face it the the, the <laughs> missions to uh, the, <laughs> he'll be dead the missions to uh, the moon in the 1960s <laughs> Uh, they virtually all failed. Yes. It was just an absolute fluke yes. that they managed to get there and back. I fluke. mean, it was probably they probably only well, had about a. Well, well, uh, well we're, let's rewind slightly. <laughs> fluke. <laughs> what what does fluke mean? If fluke, fluke, it means uh, it means that against all the odds, it succeeds anyway. Yes. Well, fluke is just like by a uh, lucky chance. Lucky chance. Yes. yes. So fluke. Is lucky chance also it's a it's a type of <laughs> worm that lives in your <laughs> your your stomach <laughs> uh, a liver fluke yes is is a is, is a is a is a parasite that uh, uh, you can ingest on uh, in food and uh, water and it burrows through your stomach wall anyway I don't think into we were, your liver we're, we're going way our way liver fluke. yes okay I don't think that's what we're actually talking yes, about we're talking about mark we got distracted as usual okay, I wonder if although you might find that the, there are some liver fluke on Mars but yes if you if you if you actually managed to get someone to Mars by the time they got there they would probably be dead because of the conditions and the atmospherics and all sorts of things so we will be able to get a corpse to mars but not much else ah pedro's asked an interesting question oh there. i'm wondering whether he's testing our knowledge is he testing us yes yeah pedro says oh hello pedro do you like my shirt tonight by the way There's no stripes how many planets are there in this i was ironing wasn't i i was ironing all my stripy shirts for Pedro on Sunday. Yes, I think so. I th if you didn't see that, you go and have a look at our Sunday. Uh, I think you were watching football, weren't you, on on Sunday? Pedro wasn't there, but it was so exciting. I was ironing all my stripy shirts, and uh, also showing uh, words and teaching at the same time. <laughs> How many planets are there in the solar system? I think this is a bit of a trick question. Is it? Well, because uh, why well, have, have, have some gone missing? Have well, some, no. Have some of them exploded? Pluto was 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 downgraded from a planet, wasn't it? Yes, but but uh, but have but they, they, but suddenly there is a lot of interest in Pluto again, because they 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 discarded Pluto. They said Pluto is nothing; it's unimportant. But now they've discovered, after flying by, that Pluto is actually a very interesting planet, and and now they they're kind of saying. OK, we didn't like Pluto for a while, but now we, we, we kind of like it again because there's there's some interesting things on it. So you can see how fickle, fickle scientists. Is can... it eight or nine? Eight or nine what? Planets. Well, let's go through them. Mercury. Well, no, well, let's go through them. That's what I'm doing. Yes. Well, I was go I was going to say, let's go let's through them. Let's see if them. we can get this right. Mercury. We have to establish what we're doing before we do it. <laughs> Mercury, Venus. So Earth, Mercury, Venus, Venus Earth, Earth, Mars, Mars. Is it Saturn or is it is it 
uh, is it Saturn next? No, it's not. It's no, Jupiter. Ne Jupiter. Then it's Saturn. Saturn. Then it's Neptune. 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 Then it's Pluto. Pluto. So is it so seven? I thought there were eight. Well, I've counted mm. eight. There are eight. Oh, right. OK. Right. All right. So eight then or seven if we don't count Pluto. That's it. So seven if we don't count Pluto. But I'm going to count Pluto because between you and me, Pluto is a very interesting planet. Very interesting. You should go there one day. It's lovely in the summer. <laughs> Saturn. Uranus. Sorry. Oh yes, we Uranus. missed. We missed out Uranus. 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 I I, I saw Uranus. Saturn. Last... Uranus. I saw Pluto. I saw. Eight. Eight. I'm going. <laughs> I s I'm just trying to say something you see, which is witty, which might keep some viewers actually watching. Oh. I saw Uranus last night. What? There you go. That was it. That's... I was asleep. I didn't notice. You shouldn't bend over like that. Don't be disgusting, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> I saw I, I saw a full moon <laughs> on the horizon. Well, you say my face looks like a giant moon. You say I've got a moon face, don't you, Mr. Duncan? Yes. Because uh, you know it's round and looks like the moon. You know, you know, you know, you know. Steve was so angry earlier. He said, "I want to punch a chaffinch." I want to punch a chaffinch. That, saying that. That's how angry he was. Eight. Do you do you want to punch it? You can punch the chaffinch now if you want. Do you want to punch it now? There's a chaffinch for you to punch, Mr. Steve. There, there you go. go. Look at that. He's so <laughs> violent. Did you see that? Yes. That's cruelty. That is. There we go. Yes, we missed out. Uh, we missed out Uranus, but we got it in in the end. <laughs> uh, and it's eight. Yes, Uranus. I knew we'd missed, I knew we'd missed one. Uh, my favorite. What was uh, my favorite planet? Martin says was Jupiter. Your favorite planet? Yes, you can have a favorite planet. How can you have a favorite planet? I, 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 there's only one that I've been to. That's Earth. <laughs> Earth. If it, Earth is my favorite planet, because, because my favorite planet. <laughs> what's, what would your, my, what's your favorite planet, <laughs> Mister Duncan? Alpha, Go on. Alpha Centura. That's a star. <laughs> yes, well, I, I, well, of course, that's where stars belong, on stars. That'd be a bit hot, Mr. Yeah. Duncan. Yes, I think so. That's our nearest, uh, our nearest sun, isn't it? I think it's about uh, two and a half light years away, Alpha Centauri. That's amazing, isn't it? When you look up at the night sky and you see all those uh, stars, it's hard to believe there are actually suns just like our own. Every single one of those little dots... And in the sky, they are suns, and the nearest one, and all all the, the all the stars that we can see in the sky are all in our own galaxy. They're all just in our galaxy. So there's about two hundred billion. Look at these. Listen to these figures, Mr. Duncan. Oh. There's about two hundred billion stars in our own galaxy, the Milky Way. And yeah. they're all the stars that we can see when we look up in the night sky. And then on top of that, and we can't see them without a telescope, there are then about another two to three hundred billion galaxies, each of which contains about two to three hundred billion stars each. All of which may have planets revolving around them with life. Mm. Maybe Just like us. Maybe somewhere. Well, not like us, because... You know, well, not like us. We're complete weirdos. I'm hoping on, <laughs> on I'm hoping on other planets. Uh, uh, I'm hoping on other planets that, that we haven't survived. So so maybe we've gone, we've died out and withered away. But Martin, so what's your favourite planet? So what? Sorry. What's your favourite planet? Go on. I've, you've just asked me that question off the top of your head. Favourite planet? I've just told you. Did you? I said Earth. Well, you said Alpha Centauri, and then I had to correct yes, you. Yes, but I was just being flippant. But well, my, I think but my would... first answer was Earth. That that's my favourite planet. It's the only oh, one. I... That's a good answer. Well, it's the, it's, it's the <laughs> only one I've been to. I, I have no other point of reference. I haven't been to any other planet. I haven't been around the cosmos, flying around on a little spaceship like like Han Solo. Han Solo. Oh dear oh, me. Oh God! Don't get oh, on Star no. Wars. No, that wasn't what I was going to say. Mm. What? Oh, anyway. 
<laughs> what were you going to say? I don't think it, it doesn't really matter now. The the <laughs> the motivation just leaves my body so quickly. <laughs> Earth, that's a good answer, Mr. Duncan. Earth. Alpha Centauri, yes. Oh, it's four light years away, is it? Okay. <laughs> I've been corrected. I couldn't remember exactly what it was. No, we, we had noticed. But that's it. <laughs> I mean, the nearest star to us, 4.37 light years. So going at 186,000 miles per second, oh. which is the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second. I don't know what that is in kilometres. That would take you four over four years to get there at the speed of light. Mm. And then when you get there, you probably won't find anything. <laughs> Which, of course, returns us to the original problem, and that's getting there. And, so, sorry, if you go there at the speed of light and then come back, everyone will probably be dead because of relativity. Everything, everyone's got older back here on Earth. Yes, we talked about this the other week. I feel like, am I in a time loop? Is this the past happening again? We had this. We can't go back in the past. We, we had that discussion as well. We had the same conversation. Uh, people will be thinking this is a recording. It's not a recording, honestly. It's just Steve repeating it. Pedro says I look short. Dear. What am I in centimetres? <laughs> I'm hoping tonight at some point I will get to the end of a sentence <laughs> before Steve explodes into another piece of randomness. <laughs> oh, 300,000 kilometres a second. What is? Uh, the speed of light. Oh, is it? Uh, thank you, Fernando. Did you know that when the space shuttle... Sounds about right. Did you know that when the space shuttle goes into space, it goes four times the speed of sound? Four times the speed of sound. As fast as a bullet. So when the space shuttle used to take off, it went up as fast as a bullet. Can you believe that? I, I thought you said, sorry, I thought you said it went four times the speed of a, of a bullet. Yes, Mac Mac eight. Mac eight. Yes. Okay. Well, Mac one is the speed of sound. Okay, that. Well, that's what I said. Yes. I said the speed of sound. Okay. What, what did you think I said? I said the speed. Mac eight. Did I say the speed of sound, everyone? Well, you said. I didn't say the speed of light. That's Star Wars. Anyway. It's, a, it's a different thing altogether. We don't have light speed. Three hundred thousand kilometers. Yes, that's two people. Inglis, thank you very much. Uh, it's pretty quick, isn't it? Let's face it. When you switch on a light bulb, <laughs> yeah, that's what we, uh, we 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 phoned up a man from NASA, and I asked how how fast. Boring, it, how, says Psycho. <laughs> uh, I. Are you okay? Are you on the spectrum or something? <laughs> Do you want some pills? I I phoned up NASA and I asked how fast the speed of sound is, and they said pretty fast to answer your question pedro i'm probably well i'm five foot ten what uh, what's this got to do with anything pedro says i look i am shorter than mr duncan but mr duncan is is, is six foot so i'm probably about three or four centimeters shorter than you am Ev i everyone is shorter than you're, you're shorter than everyone. I am not short. I'm actually above average height. It's just because Mr. Duncan looks tall. See, this is my normal height. This is... I'm getting up on my tiptoes now, you Mr. Know, Duncan. You know, when I do my live stream, Ooh. normally I have to get on my knees to make Steve look taller. Not the only time he gets on his knees, but I won't go into that. <laughs> Mr. Duncan. I'm only joking. Ah, seven, eight grade class question. Yes, that's probably what it is. We are only talking basic stuff, aren't we? But it's still interesting. <laughs> yes, that's about as far as we can go, basic. I, I feel like I'm in kindergarten. Kids in kindergarten learn this stuff. Where is it's, the moon? Is the moon in the sky? It's strange to believe. Yes, is, but... Is, is there a man in the moon? I'm also shrinking a bit through through sort of semi-depression over the water supply. Old age. Uh, oh, I've been accused of being a he hooligan. But you are a hooligan. Yes, I'm 5'10", five, 5'10", ten, five ten, but I don't know what that is in centimetres, um, I'm afraid. One second to reach the moon, says Fernando. Light, yes. Yes. That's about right. That's good. You should have heard it when it blew up. It was loud. What's that? 
Jeff. Hmm, not sure. Five feet, ten inches. You'll have to look that up, Petra, Pedro. I'm uh, not sure what that is in... Uh... Petra. I thought you were going to say Petra. There's a, there's a question. Now, I'm not sure if I do know the answer to this. Nicole says, Pop. why do we always see the same face of the moon? I think that is because it is just uh, a phenomenon which you do see quite often where moons going around planets only show one face. Can I, can I explain and, it? Uh, no. Can I explain it? You can. It's because the rotation of the moon matches the, its, its orbit of the Earth, which means that as it rotates, its same side is always facing the Earth because it is also rotating at the same speed as it orbits the Earth. It's a very unique thing, apparently. Ah, there you go. Look at that. I it's, knew that. I knew that, you see. Well done, Mr Duncan. But apparently it's not a, as uncommon because you think it's very suspicious. Oh, oh, I see. Suddenly you know all about it. No, well, I was oh. just saying, I, I said I didn't know just. it's not unusual to to see that somehow mm. that this, this mm. occurs. Mm, mm, they don't mm. quite know, but they used to be suspicious. Mm. I remember in the 1970s mm. when I was growing up, they used to say that uh, mm. what goes on on the dark side of the moon, there could be aliens living there. We have no idea. Except for Except the, there, aren't. No, there, there are there aren't. Are, there are no aliens. They've actually been to the other side of the moon and took photographs. But the other side of the moon is covered with lots and lots of craters. Oh, so, Whatever thoughts are in here are coming out of here. There's no filter tonight. There isn't. No, there's no filter. I think there should be, though. I think there might be, <laughs> you know, maybe maybe some sort of sedative, maybe a big a big tranquilizer gun or something. I will chase Steve round the garden later and try to. Nicole, do you always know? Do you already know the answer to that question? Are you testing us or do you? want to know I, I it's a strange it is odd that that again the, should be a school room question but we often forget the answer to it but mr duncan is right um yes i know it, the moon is actually spinning on its axis the, is it the yes it, it's it's around. basically rotating as it orbits and the rotation on the orbit is is is, is virtually identical uh, not exactly identical because of course we the moon's phases the moon isn't isn't always in the same place all the time which so maybe over millions of years the moon we would gradually see another side to the moon as, well as the moon is slowly take. moving away it moves away about one centimeter every every 10 years or something yes, that's right You're so right there, so Duncan. the moon is slowly moving away from us and they think in maybe a million years from now so don't worry it's not happening next week but a million years from now, the, the moon will be so far away, the conditions on Earth will change because, of course, the moon has a lot of influence on the way things on our planet react, including the, the oceans. So the tide and the movement of the sea is all caused by the moon pulling on the oceans. So that's why we have the tide so sometimes the sea will come in and then go out. And that is the moon's gravitational pull, literally pulling the oceans towards it and then easing off. It's true. It's a, that, science Duncan. is amazing. Yeah, Sorry. I think people know that. Mr. Anyway. Yes. Uh, ah, interesting. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Sergio says that we're, we're on a speeding bullet. We're traveling at 107 thousand kilometers per hour hundred uh, hundred and seven speed thousand two hundred and eighteen kilometers per hour so, to be yes. to be exact yes I so know. we are spinning around quite quickly and that's probably the reason why i always get dizzy open-minded open heart says that we're, we're, we're talking too much together and we're not interacting uh jeff was cutting the grass when something happened <laughs> was that uh you talking about the space shuttle blowing up I don't know. I don't. Jeff, I think Jeff's talking. We about haven't mentioned the, it yet. Ah, uh, but Jeff mentioned something about the a loud explosion, and then I thought, yes, I think he was on, <laughs> right. <laughs> I think I think there's been a loud explosion in your head, hasn't it? <laughs> Are you okay? Shall I call an ambulance? Yes, Inglés, I agree. 
we we shouldn't be sending men to Mars. We should be sending some kind of intelligent robot. Yes, or maybe just Mr. Steve. We can send Mr. Steve to Mars. I think that's a very good idea. Well, yeah. As soon as possible. I'll get onto the phone now. I'll go. I'm going to phone Elon Musk now and say, "Look, we're, you, you know what the Russians did? They used to send monkeys and dogs into space. I, I think we can we can test the the first Earth rocket uh, th th that's going to go to Mars, and we can put Mr. Steve inside to test it." So is Jeff? Jeff, are you saying whereabouts <laughs> are you, Jeff? Are you saying that you actually heard the space shuttle blow up? Or do you mean you heard about it when you were cutting the grass? Or did you actually, are you sort of near Cape Canaveral or somewhere and you actually heard it? <laughs> were you mowing your grass next to the space shuttle when it blew up? I, do, I don't know what this conversation is anymore. Am I'll I, keep up, Mr Duncan. Am I asleep? Am I dreaming <laughs> this? This is like some strange nightmare. No, Connell, we don't have any idioms tonight. <laughs> uh, we haven't prepared any. Uh, so you'll have to wait until Sunday, I'm afraid, uh, <laughs> before that. Before we have some more idioms, I had a lot. Did, did we, if you were if we were there on Sunday, I had quite a lot of idioms concerned with uh, the ball use of the word ball. Ball. It was uh, fascinating, it, and I was ironing at the same time. Some people might say that tonight's live stream is a load of balls. <laughs> How can we live knowing that in a million years the moon will go away? Because it's moving now. They've, well, they've already worked out by monitoring the, the moon over a hundred years. They've already worked out that. What? Just, <laughs> just, you know, sometimes when you think things, just just keep it in the in the brain and not not sort of just say it. Oh, I'm on the spectrum. You, you are definitely on on the spectrum somewhere. You have to be. What? What was I saying? I can't remember. I can't remember what I was saying. This might be the last live stream I ever do, by the way, because I, I think I think I'm just going to go to the nearest. Well, Jeff said that he hospital. He, he's in Florida and thus heard the space shuttle blow up and he was mowing the lawn. You're not going to forget that. Uh, well, which one? That event. There's been more than one space shuttle blown up. I'm not making fun, by the way. I, I don't, I'm just saying there's more than one. There isn't just one. There, there, in the past, there have been two that have exploded. OK, not one. So we, you know, that's all. Sergio's right. Space radiation is so hard. We can forget about space travel. Exactly. Exactly. It's all just hype because somebody wants to uh, be on the television and make a name for themselves. Ray Bradbury. Ah, uh, oh, yes. The more. Oh, I'm going to shut up. Oh. Oh. Ray Bradbury, yes. He he wrote the Martian Chronicles, if I remember rightly. Brilliant stories. We read those at school. And also, of course, it was made into a TV series as well. But yes, the, the Ray Bradbury, a very famous uh, writer, science fiction writer. Yes, Inglis, it will save many human lives because are you imagine what would happen if because of ego, mm -hmm. let's face it, if they're going to try and send a man to, or a woman for yes, that matter, or a transgender or a transgender person to the moon, we've got to be, you know, politically correct, uh, then and it goes wrong and that person gets killed, that would kill all missions for for decades because the the people would be you know uh, all the funding would get pulled although the mush missions and they could for the cost of sending a man there which will cost phenomenal amounts of money because of all the resources that a person would need to get there you could probably send about 10 missions with a robot uh, so in terms of value for money it's much cheaper yeah. to send a robot I, I, I hate uh, to be obvious here I don't want to be mr. obvious but the problem with that is we don't have a bloody robot to send there. If we had a robot, I'm sure we would send a robot. We would go, hello, Mr. Robot. Could you please go to Mars for us? OK, I will go to Mars for you. No problem. 
And of course, don't tell the robot. Don't tell the robot that we're sending him just in case it blows up, because because robots are expendable. It doesn't matter. You see, we can't send a human being, so we're going to send this robot. Uh, 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 uh. We're going to send it to I Mars. It's a bit better than that. Uh, 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 uh. Well, well, it's it's an early robot. It doesn't do very much. It's not Terminator. It's nothing like that. It just does this. Uh, 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 uh. Do you remember in the 1970s, everybody did the robot dance in the 1970s? Uh, 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 uh. I think the robot dance will come back one day. I really do. I, I love the robot dance. He spends too much time by himself. I'm the only human being he sees from one week to the next. And uh, idioms about the moon, says Connell. Well, there we go. We could have done it. Well, we didn't know we were going to talk about <laughs> yes. the moon. Yes, yes, because I'm psychic, you see. We didn't know we were going to talk about the moon, but <laughs> yeah, idioms because, of the moon, look. Yes, yes, we should, have, we should have done idioms about the moon because I knew, because I can see into the future that we would end up talking about the moon tonight. Yes, you're right. Yes, I, 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 must, I must use my psychic powers more often. <laughs> Idioms about the moon. Ask for the moon. Bark at the moon. Moon face. Is that an actual idiom? Moon, moon face. Or is that just what you say to me? If you're, if you moon, it means that you take your trousers down and flash your bottom. Yes, you you show your bottom cheeks, your bum cheeks. If you moon, yes. If you moon somebody, or you moon out of the car window. I'm surprised that all of you can talk about scientific topics in English with high level. Thank you, Mika, for that. Well, I am, of course, a scientist. <laughs> Although you haven't demonstrated it much tonight, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Tess and Nicole says, what about the, the Space Force that Trump uh, wants to oh, start? Oh, for goodness. Yes. Nobody's taking anything that guy says seriously. Is anyone taking mm. him seriously? A Space Force. It sounds like it sounds like a very bad TV show. <laughs> uh, they, 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 the first thing into space was a dog, wasn't it? Yes, somebody's pointed that out before. It was Russia sent a dog up there, didn't they? Yes. Somebody did say what the name of the person was, but I think it's got gone now. I thought it was an angry mouse, but it wasn't an angry mouse. It was a dog. The first living creature to go into space was a dog. And apparently the dog is still in space now. It's still going around the earth. Really? Yeah, it's still going around. It's just a big pile of bones now, but yeah. Didn't it come back to earth? <laughs> I don't know. I think it must have done. I think they must have got it back to earth eventually. I don't know. I don't know about that. That was the Russians, of course. They it were was. they were rushing into space. <laughs> Mr. Duncan. That's actually quite good. Mm. <laughs> uh, Klebson says that somebody will go into space once in a blue moon blue moon which is uh, something that happens uh, very occasionally so or very rarely yes we can use that as an expression if something happens once in a blue moon it means it happens now and again it is a rare event <laughs> here is a rare event we're going to be going on time we are going to go in around about three minutes. So if you want to say something, now is the time to do it. And no, I'm not talking to you, Steve. <laughs> I've said enough. I think you've said plenty tonight. Goodness me, it's been very lively. <laughs> open minded says I'm a fool. Open minded says <laughs> you, you talk foolish, <laughs> Mr. Steve. Oh, it, it's just humour, really. Is humor. it? Humour. I'm not sure about that. I'm trying to entertain. Really? I'm also not sure about that. <laughs> I, I'm not sure about anything these days. The world is a very strange place. Have you noticed how weird and strange everything is at the moment? I, I was saying this to you the other day. I, I, I really think everything has gone strange for the past couple of years. I don't think there's any particular reason. It just seems that everything seems strange, seems weird. Politics humanity, the way we are all behaving towards each other. It, it all seems very odd. So yeah. I think we went through sort of decades of, of quite sort of st stable sort of everything was quite stable. And I think 
suddenly a lot of things have happened like Brexit, Donald Trump being elected, lots of and we have no we have no things. water. We have no water. That's, that's that's the strangest thing of all. We have no water. In so so yes, Br Brexit, Donald Trump, North Korea getting a little angry. Then we had mm. Iran getting a little angry and now we have no water mr steve and myself we, we can't run the tap the tap is empty there's no water it's all gone wrong since uh, since uh, the year 2000 hasn't it strange things have happened since 2000 since the, i think it's all gone very strange since then well my, my thought is the pace of change is accelerating see i i think we concentrate too much on on the year and, and the date because because the universe doesn't care what year it is. The universe doesn't know that it's 2018. That's just something we made up. We 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 created 2018. The universe doesn't know that it's 2018. It just it just continues on its way silently. Well, that's not silently, Mr. Duncan. You actually made a noise then. Well, it's just for dramatic effect. You see you could have just stayed silent yes <laughs> and and yes that, that's also good advice for you as well um, Clebson says man I will go to Mars maybe once in a blue moon yes maybe maybe once in a blue moon yes I like that maybe in a hundred years time who knows we are going in a moment let's have one last look at the live chat before we disappear I'm gonna have some chocolate it seems that Mr. Steve is wise, wise than you. Oh, OK. Thank you, Open Mind. I'm not sure what Open Mind wants to say. I thought Open Mind was saying you were foolish and now Open Mind is saying that I'm foolish. He's saying you've lost your mind. Yes. I don't know. We have. We admit it. We're complete lunatics. Yes. Well, speak for yourself. Jeff said they were the first in space. Yes, the Russians were first in space yes. with with Sputnik. And beep, the USA beep. were very annoyed about it. Do you want to hear my impression of Sputnik? That's apparently the, the sound that Sputnik made. That, that's very good, Mr. Duncan. That's my impression of Sputnik. You like that sound, don't you? Yes. Anyway, there's a program on Russia today. Oh, yes. I, I was hoping you wouldn't say that. <laughs> Just opening yet another can of worms. I'm not. So we're going now. We Same. haven't got time to talk about anything else. We're going. I OK, want to, right. Yeah, it's going. It's time to go. Please don't go, says Inglés. Well, it's now it's now half past 11 at night. You see, it's night time here now. <laughs> so we would love to stay. But unfortunately, it is coming up to 11 31 so now it's 29 minutes away from midnight and we've got some chocolate to eat all of the neighbors the neighbors are asleep and it's so hot in here because the temperature is very high tonight i've actually got the window <laughs> open the window is open at the moment and tomorrow apparently tomorrow steve it's going to be 31 degrees tomorrow that's very hot. That is incredibly hot. Very Lots hot. Of people saying goodbye. Thank you very much indeed. Nicole says something about it was a black hole. <laughs> really? Is she talking about Uranus again? <laughs> anyway. What? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what Nicole's referring to there. I don't know. I don't know where you're looking. Oh, I see. Maybe it was right. a black hole, Mr. Duncan. Yes, I well, of course, we know a lot about black holes because they are big. And if you go into them, you disappear. But 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 people don't quite know what happens after it's because no one has ever gone into a black hole, have they? <laughs> Fernando says your impression of the silent universe was glorious. Yes. And of course, sound, sound cannot uh, be transmitted in space. Ah, well, apparently, uh -huh. apparently scientists have said that it is possible to hear sound in space. Right, OK. Yes, yes. Uh, because of the recent Star Wars film that came out I at Christmas last year, a lot of people were complaining about the noises uh, in space because the sound wouldn't travel. But apparently some scientists have said 
it is possible to actually have sound in space due to the actual vibration caused by the sound right yes so okay. I, I think what that means is if is if one thing explodes and you're nearby you will also feel the vibration of that which in turn might cause some sort of sound that's how i understand it as it hits the spaceship you're in that's presumably. it yes and it and, and it will uh, vibrate the the outer skin of the uh, i thought you were going to say it was because actually we think of, of space as a vacuum but it isn't a vacuum there are molecules there but they're very spread out so if you're going fast enough you might they, they might it, there might be enough to impact your spaceship to actually make a sound vacuum that's a great word vacuum Va vacuum the, yes yes vacuum but you can say vacuum i know i know but if you want to remember how to spell it i used to i used to i used to think of it as vacuum yes uh because that that gets anyway right thank you uh jeff's off Oh look, he sent us a he sent us a moon and a star, and two hands. Thank you very yes. much indeed. I think those hands are like pushing us away. I think I think the hands are going. Please go. Please clear off. Please leave the internet now. Oh look, <laughs> open-minded. It says, "Don't worry, you're the best teacher in the world." Oh, thank you. I guess that... me doesn't like or she. Anyway, we love you all, and we hope that you've been entertained and uh, have improved your English in some small way tonight I don't feel as though we've done much to improve people's English we've just talked about a lot of subjects but then hopefully just hearing us talk mm. is helping with um, with your English yes and knows? we'll be back on Sunday and we will I promise we'll have some uh, we'll have some idioms or some phrases um and uh i can't think of anything else to say yes i, well, I was just wondering what you were doing there well do you realize well, you, you, were, you you've just i been, was filling you, in because i thought you were uh, oh no you don't have to fill in for anything i wondered what you were doing that i thought you're you're in some sort of trance or something <laughs> no. i was waiting you to i thought mr steve was about to start speaking in tongues caradas has had problems with the messages Sorry about that. Hopefully you can join us on Sunday. That's not my fault. Speak freely. That, that's not my fault. That's YouTube. You can complain to YouTube about that. Yes. Jeff's open minded. Jeff says it's always fun. Yes. Sergio. There's a point, Sergio. The black matter or, or the dark matter, uh, which makes up. Uh, uh, where are you going, Mr. Duncan? I'm going. Oh. No, you've got. I don't know how to shut this all down. No, that's you it. Can't leave me on my own. It's Steve's show. It's the Mr. Steve's show. I'm here for another hour. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. I am going. But no, Sergio is right. Dark matter. Maybe that's what makes the sound. All the matter we can see is only a small fraction of what's actually out there. The rest of it's invisible. And they're trying to find out what it's all made of. Oh, you're back, Mr. Duncan. How, how wonderful. You know, the most fascinating I've thing. Just that. <laughs> You've just noticed this. Yes, I've only just noticed that. This has been on, on my body for, for the whole night. It's very true. He is very fragile. I'm feeling very fragile because I'm hot. I'm a very dainty flower, don't you know? The thing that I'm really interested in are cosmic rays cosmic rays firing all the time mm. and they actually go through you did you know that that cosmic rays pass through your body in fact they accidentally found out about cosmic rays when some astronauts were orbiting the earth and apparently what happened is they were getting flashes in their eyes they kept seeing flashes in their eyes and they couldn't work out what it was they thought maybe they had a medical problem but it turned out that that what are you doing carry on carry I'm on telling no, a story. don't mind me well I do mind you because you're doing something it's very distracting what's he doing there <laughs> <laughs> give me that give me that uses of the word set <laughs> I'm gonna get one in then just for Jeff <laughs> we're not having uses of the word set 
but apparently yes yes this th these flashes of light that the astronauts were talking about turned out to be cosmic rays passing through their bodies and as it was going through their eyes the cosmic rays were reacting with the back of the eye and that's incredible so yes that's how they discovered cosmic rays Ooh. Anyway, about them anyway. Nah. right, we're going now. We have no uses of the word set, but we are going to set off. We are going to set sail. We are going to set off. say, yes, set off. You're right. Yes, that's why I said it. We're going to set off <laughs> do, for the living room. Do, do I know you? <laughs> <laughs> we're going now set sail yes mr steve is now going i'll go first shall i yes we'll see you later mr steve bye bye everybody see you on sunday all being well that's it he's gone and there it is the the final live view looking out towards shrewsbury and there you can see twinkling in the distance you can see the lights Earlier, of course, we had the most wonderful sunset. Did you see the sunset as Mr. Steve clatters around with the plates? There it is earlier. The sunset tonight and there is the view now. Isn't that lovely? And that's where we will leave it. <laughs> Maybe forever. Who knows? This is Mr. Duncan in the birthplace of English saying thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this live chat. Lots of things to think about. The captions will be available later. There will be captions available later. Recorded captions later. OK, for everyone to watch and enjoy. And of course, you know what's coming next until the next time. It, sorry. The water's back on. Just thought I'd tell you. Ta -ta. You know, sometimes in life, there are moments where you feel as if you've made a very bad decision. Do you ever get that feeling? Do you ever feel that sometimes maybe in the past you may have made the wrong choice? I'm back on Sunday, by the way, I am back on Sunday, 2 p.m. UK time. This is Mr. Duncan saying. Ta-ta for now.